Hi, it's Dwyer. Gamblersadvisory.com, DwyerVIP.com. Free sites. Today is February the 26th, 2018. Let's talk about Terence Crawford's trek to 147 pounds to challenge Jeff Horn for his title. But first, remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Let me just add, I've deliberately put the camera at this angle. You'll see what I have to live with. For those who don't know, I'm a New York Giants fan when it comes to American football. My girl is a New England Patriot fan. So, of course, Patriots lose the Super Bowl. I have to put up with New England number one and all this other stuff all over where we live. Okay, whatever. So it goes. Let's jump into boxing, right? First, let me just extend my prayers and sympathies to the family of Scott Westgarth, 31, who passed away after a fight in which he won. Right? Let's all remember that while I love boxing, while I believe men should have the opportunity to make a decision, to go forward with the sport, the sport is dangerous. These men are risking it all. Anything can go wrong to anyone. Right? Again, my prayers go out to Scott Westgarth's family. Um, truly a tragedy. Now let's shift gears and let's talk about this 147 pound championship fight. Let me say this. Now when I saw the fight live, I didn't have the benefits of constantly updating CompuBox numbers. When I saw the fight, the fight was close. At the end of the fight, I thought the fight could be scored for either fighter. Right? Jeff Horn was declared the winner. Well, let's revisit Jeff Horn against Manny Pacquiao. Right? Just understand, now we have CompuBox numbers. Let's talk about the jabs that Jeff Horn landed. In the first round, Jeff Horn landed one jab. In the second round, Jeff Horn landed one jab. In the third round, Jeff Horn landed one jab. In the fourth round, Jeff Horn threw 19 jabs and landed none of them. In the fifth round, Jeff Horn landed three jabs. He threw 16 of them. In the sixth round, we're now at the midway point of the fight, Jeff Horn tries to land 13 jabs. He lands none of them. Right? In terms of attempts, just backing up a bit, first round, Jeff Horn throws 13 jabs. Only lands one. Second round, he throws 18 jabs. Only lands one. Third round, he throws 16 jabs. Only lands one. Now, the reason this is important is it highlights the secret of Jeff Horn's success. Because on the scorecards, three judges understand that one judge gave Jeff Horn five of the first six rounds. A second judge gave Jeff Horn four of the first six rounds. This is against Manny Pacquiao, a fighter who usually is a judge favorite. Right? So just understand, these numbers are highly relevant because they show that Jeff Horn is a guy who's winning fights based on what he's doing between punches, right? He's a framer. He's a guy who, whether he's landing punches or not, 
looks like he's controlling the action, right? For those of you who want full fight stats, just understand that Jeff Horn threw 197 jabs at Manny Pacquiao. He landed 19 of them. His connect rate was below 10%. It was 9.6%. So surely you're thinking Jeff Horn must have been very accurate throwing power punches. Jeff Horn threw 429 power punches at Manny Pacquiao. He landed 73 of them, a 17% connect rate, right? Put differently, Manny Pacquiao landed 59 jabs out of 193 thrown. His connect rate was 30.6%. Manny Pacquiao, in terms of power punches, threw 380 and landed not 73 like Jeff Horn, but 123. He landed 32.4%. So in a fight in which Jeff Horn cumulatively landed 14.7% of his punches, Manny Pacquiao landed 31.8%. But yet from where I sat, watching the fight live, even with this punch disparity, I thought it was a close fight. I was unsure of who won it. Right? Manny's a southpaw. People need to understand that Terence Crawford, who was big for 140, who should have been fighting at 147 earlier, Terence Crawford's ambidextrous. Right, Crawford knows, looking at these numbers, that if he fights Southpaw, he can neutralize Jeff Horn's jab. He knows that because he just saw Manny Pacquiao do it for 12 rounds. Right, let me also say too that right now, Terence Crawford knows that because Jeff Horn can't land his jab, especially if Crawford fights Southpaw, Jeff Horn is going to have to collapse the pocket. He's going to have to make the fight look like he's the person who physically is going to be able to muscle. Terence Crawford around. Folks, that's going to be very hard to do. I don't believe it can be done. Because Terence Crawford is a technician who can handle himself deep in the pocket and who also has certain moves where when someone tries to collapse the pocket against him, Crawford knows how to take a sidestep, keep the attacker lifting his feet while Crawford throws punches. Let me also point out too that Crawford can go flat-footed. Right? Crawford can hit hard. Jeff Horn is defensively challenged. Understand, Jeff Horn hits the canvas against Randall Bailey. Understand, in a fight in which I picked Ali Fineca to beat him. In fact, hell, I picked Randall Bailey way back when to beat Jeff Horn. In a fight in which I picked Ali Fineca to beat him. And those videos are still up. You can hear my comments from whenever those fights took place. 2015. Right? Ali Fineca puts Jeff Horn on the canvas. Now Jeff is a fighter. Jeff is able to get off the canvas and Jeff is able to then reestablish himself. Jeff's also a puncher. Right? Jeff was able to stop both Bailey and Ali Funeka. But understand even in Jeff's biggest moment against Manny Pacquiao, 
The referee at the end of round nine goes over to Jeff's corner and had to tell Jeff Horn, this is the ref who has the best seat in the house, right? He's closer to the fighters than those at ringside. He's closer to the fighters than the judges are. The referee had to tell Jeff, if you don't show me something this round, I'm going to pull the plug. Now, Terrence Crawford is precise, right? He's a guy who lands a high percentage of his punches. He's going to have a lot to hit. Understand, Jeff Horn has gone down not just in more than one fight, but early in those fights. He's not hitting the canvas because of fatigue. Rather, while he's alert, he's getting hit flush, right? And he's fighting a guy, Crawford, who can hit on the move, as evidenced by him dropping Victor Postal in a fight in which I thought Postal would give Crawford problems. You can look at that video, right? He hit Victor Postal while on the move. Postal and his trainer, Freddie Roach, couldn't figure out how to corner Crawford in that fight. Crawford's just simply too slick. There are too many angles here. He can fight like Manny Pacquiao. He can turn around and fight righty. He could draw a line in the sand, fight in the pocket. Again, Crawford at times wants to be found. Right? Crawford also knows that he can set it up so that Horn can't hit him with his jab. Crawford has a very good jab. You remember he out jabbed Ricky Burns, a jabber himself, in that win by Crawford overseas. The other problem Jeff Horn is going to have is that his fight against Manny Pacquiao was in Australia. Right, this fight is going to be in Las Vegas. I think this is a statement fight for Terrence Crawford. I think Crawford completely overwhelms Jeff Horn. I think both men are going to know that Jeff Horn's only hope is to collapse the pocket is to lean his body up against Crawford's body like he did against Manny Pacquiao. And the problem is Crawford moves too well, is gonna pivot at the last minute, throws excellent short punches, can operate inside, outside, righty, lefty, lead puncher, counter puncher. Crawford, simply put, is one of the absolute best technicians in the sport. Let me also say too, that over time in boxing, right, we dilute terms. Everybody and their brother is a champion, right? You hear about a unified champion, which means that a champion owns more than one belt in a weight class. Right? And then you forget that there are other belts in that same weight class. In other words, a fighter can own two or three belts in a weight class, but yet there could still be another champion in that weight class. Well, just understand, one of the best accomplishments in the sport in the last year was when Terrence Crawford decided before he left 140 pounds to not be the unified champion. Let's throw out a different word. You hardly hear it. Hardly hear it because it's so rare in boxing. Crawford decided at 140 that he was gonna be the undisputed champion. Right, just to understand as we think about fighters of the year, as we look around divisions and as we try to give awards to new faces, just to understand that Terrence Crawford last year 
collected all of the belts at 140 pounds. He wasn't unified. He wasn't just unified. He was undisputed. Right now, you're having him fight a guy who wasn't able to land two jabs in the same round against Manny Pacquiao until the fifth round. And that was where he was fighting at home. Right? You're putting Terrence Crawford, a craftsman, right, who walks around in the high 140s, 150s, right? Don't be one of these people who thinks, oh, this is Crawford's first fight at 147. And he's fighting a physically rough guy in Jeff Horn. Jeff Horn, as I make this video in his entire career, and again, I thought the Horn fight against Pacquiao was a close fight. Could have gone either way. I'm not one of these people. I'm not Teddy Atlas. I'm not Dan Rayfield. I thought it was a close fight. I give Jeff Horn his due. I admit here, I've been wrong on Jeff Horn now for multiple fights. I have a lot of respect for Jeff Horn. But again, you're talking about a fighter who could not land 20% of his total punches. Folks, he couldn't land 15% of his total punches fighting at home against Manny Pacquiao. And you're telling me that he's going to be able to beat Terrence Crawford, a guy with faster hands, more accurate hands, a different game plan depending on the level of opponent. Right? You're telling me that Horn's going to be able to beat him in Las Vegas? I don't see it. The bet I'm recommending here is to take Terrence Crawford to win the fight if you're thinking of a hedge. And I understand. This is a little counterintuitive. Horn just beat Manny Pacquiao. Well, the fight before last by decision. Right? On the judges' scorecards. I'm telling you, I don't think Jeff Horn has any chance. Let me underline that word. Any chance of beating Terrence Crawford by decision. I believe your only hedge here, if you are going to hedge it, is to take Jeff Horn by KO as a hedge. Right? Jeff Horn did stop Ali Funaka, who looked to me to be on his way to winning that fight. Right? Jeff Horn overcame a hand speed gap in that match. Right? Maybe Jeff is able to do it. He certainly overcame a hand speed gap in his fight against Manny Pacquiao, right? But as I said before, let's remember, Funeka has him on the canvas. The referee is in Jeff Horn's corner telling him, son, you need to show me more than this, right? Even in Jeff's big guest moments, he had some very bad moments, right? So I like Crawford here. I think we can start the countdown for Crawford against Keith Thurman, who's recovering from shoulder surgery. Let me point out too, to the George Groves people, I do feel there's a gap in talent between George Groves, a healthy George Groves, and Callum Smith. But this is real life. No one is going to tell me that the George Groves who had his left hand just hanging in the 12th round against Chris Eubank is, is going to be able to somehow, after surgery, be able to fight again in July, right? And have that hand be workable, right? Take these shoulder problems seriously. Right? Let's just say I'm staying away from the George Groves Callum Smith fight. Keith Thurman, great fighter with two good shoulders. He's coming off shoulder surgery. The people in the water are folks like Terrence Crawford, Sean Porter, 
right? Danny Garcia wants a rematch. Errol Spence wants his, Thurman's title, right? Just understand things at 147 are a bit hectic right now and uncertain, right? I'm expecting Terrence Crawford to hold his own starting with this fight. I like Terrence Crawford to win for the hedge. I'll take horn by KO. That's how I see it. Let me hear from you. I hope you leave your comments in the comment section to this video. Thanks for stopping by.